Hey guys, this is the first time I've recorded a video with the Pixel here. It looks pretty nice. Looks a lot nicer than the iPhone. Yeah, so I built a new power supply and I highly upgraded the, what I now call, external control panel. I don't just call it a rectifier anymore because it's a lot more than just a rectifier. But yeah, this is my new power supply. It uses the three-way switch. Well, one of them. I've got two. And yeah, if you notice, it's got two capacitors and two diodes. Why is that? It's got two rectifiers. It's got two whole separate rectifier systems. And this chooses which one it goes through. So, it's off, or AC goes through none of them. DC polar inverted polarity goes through one of them, and DC normal polarity. And yeah. So the two rectifiers are hooked up in reverse polarity. If you notice, the diode's in there. But yeah, them two diodes in there are facing reverse to each other. Mm. And so it chooses which diode for it to go through to get different polarities. Because if it does... Ugh, frick's sake. Because if it connects to the diode that's got the anode going to the transformer, then it's normal. But if it goes to the one where the cathode is facing the transformer, it's inverted. And these capacitors are electrolytic capacitors. And electrolytic capacitors only work one way. If you power them the other way, you give them reverse polarity, basically, they explode. So, ah, so yeah, I had to have two of them, one for each polarity. And they're both 2200 microfarads because I don't have any of them that are bigger, that are enough volts. All my ones that are bigger than 2200 are 6 or 10 volts, and that's not enough for these. So yeah, I thought that this was a 20 to 1 step down. Just making sure that's not upside down. I thought it was a 20 to 1 step down. It turned 240 volts into 12. But nope, it turns 120 into 12. It's a 10 to 1. So I thought it would have been 3 or 6 volts, but no, it's 6 or 12. Because that's not 240 and 240, that's 240 in neutral, which is 120. Or, so your output can be 12 and 12, which is 12, or 12 and neutral, which is 6. That's what this switch does. This is your 6 volts, 12 volts switch. This is the first power supply I've got that you are able to switch the voltage. I just woke up, so... Uh, yeah. I thought, since the, I thought this one was a 240 volt one, and it would lower it to half of what it says it does, because I'm only giving it half of the voltage, I thought I was able to power it with LEDs on 3 volt mode. I could plug it into the LED driver 2.0 and power it, but nope. That was one weird ass noise you just made. Weirdness. Alright. Why is that buzzing? Weird, what the frick? Anyway, yeah. So I'm thinking of putting some sort of a reset button on this. You touch the button and it shorts it out. <laughs> kind of like the capacitor kill switch in the LED driver. And well, basically does exactly the same thing. It kills the capacitors because we need that. Because when we switch voltage, when it's on um, six volt mode, we switch it to 12 volt mode and you switch it down to 6 volt mode, it takes a long time for it to switch back down. 
because the capacitors are already charged up to 12. So when you switch it to 6 volts, the capacitors have to drain out to the point where it reaches it. So I'm thinking of just a little short circuit button. Press that, resets the capacitors, instantly brings it down to 6 volts. Mmm. My god. And color-coded wires, positive, negative, as always. And now on to this. As you can see, it does look quite different. It looks a lot more of a mess. <laughs> it looks a lot messier. I haven't really rearranged any of the old parts. I've just added a bunch of new parts. So, we've got this now. That is a bare wires connector. So you were able to hook up power supplies like this to it that don't have a plug on them. They're just bare wires. You stick the wires into those screws and you screw them shut. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that was for an amplifier. You could screw in the wires for a speaker. And that plugs into that input. So, yeah. Come on, there we go. So yeah, the input things, got an input plug, input adapter plug, and input bare wires. So to hook up with the bare wires, you screw your wires in, that's the positive, that's the negative, or if it's AC, it doesn't matter. And then, you plug it into itself. And now it's hooked onto this. Because this has got its own wires coming off that hook on. So you gotta plug that into its input. I can't remember why I did that. Why did I do that? I did that I did that for some useful reason, but I can't remember what it is now. Hey guys, editing Charlie here. I did that because it was so much easier and was very hard to hook up the wires directly as there are no bare wires to connect it to. So the plug was the only option. So yeah. And we got that switch. I sadly did not have any other double two-way switches, so I had to use a quadruple through two-way switch. But yeah. That is ACDC switch. So you remember now how it had the DC plug coming out here and the AC plug coming out here. Instead of that, I make them go into that switch and come out here. <laughs> and yeah, so now you can now instead of disconnecting it and connecting it on the other side, now you've just got to press the button. Down is AC, up is DC. If you're plugging it into AC, that is. If you plug DC into it, both of these are DC. Mm -mm. Just, this one does not have a capacitor, and this one does. Like, after you turn it off, it'll, after you turn it off, it'll fade away on here, and it won't on here. And, diodes, I found out recently, diodes actually have resistance. So they do have a little bit of a voltage drop. So when you plug DC into it, and then you switch it to DC mode, it actually decreases the voltage a little bit, just a little bit. So yeah, if I plug DC into it, I almost always have it on AC mode. Or if it's a half wave rectified, like most of my power supplies, this is a half wave, it only has one diode. Well, it's got two diodes, but that's just because two polarities. If it's halfway rectified, then it's better for you to run the halfway to run this on. Oh, for Christ's sake! Oh, it's on AC mode, and plug it into here and have this on DC mode because this has a full wave rectifier and a larger capacitor than most of my power supplies. My only power supply that's got a full wave rectifier is my very first one. Because that, that power supply, I didn't really make it. I just took it out 
of something else and jammed it onto a piece of cardboard. And there we go, there's the first power supply. <laughs> now, oh, that was already had its own rectifier board and stuff, and it was fully rectified. But all my homemade, all my completely homemade ones made out of piece by piece by piece, solder, 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 glue, glue, glue. Like the, um, 8 volt one. Those ones are half wave. That one's half wave. This one's half wave. And yeah. So, if I need a better rectifier for powering something of higher power, like a motor or something, then I'll just, instead of using the built-in rectifier on these, I'll switch it to AC mode, and plug it into here and switch this to DC mode. Because most of these also have only 2200 microfarad capacitors. This one has a 3300. So it's got a better rectifier, a bigger, ugh, for fuck's sake, a better diode bridge and a better capacitor. So its rectifier is superior to all the other ones I've got. So yeah. And also, polarity switch. That was already put together for me, all, all for me. I took that out of the same fan system that I got this out of. I got them two double two-way switches, three-way switches. Man, first I'm calling two-way switches, three-way switches. Now I'm calling three-way switches, two-way switches. <laughs> but yeah, I got them two... I got them three-way switches and this polarity switch out of a fan system, a dual fan. These were the speed switches and power switches, and these were the direction switches. And yeah, so that was already put together. I just wrapped it up in cardboard to make it look nice and to make it easier to glue on. And... I added a second piece of cardboard. The old piece of cardboard is still there. You can still kind of see it there. But I put on a bigger one. So it... So it had a little bit more cover over the wires hanging off the sides. And it had... It uses all of this for the polarity switch. Because it's so big. <laughs> I couldn't stick it anywhere. I was planning on putting that over the diode bridge, which is underneath this switch. But after I put that switch there, there was no room for it, so I had to make room. And yeah, I had this polarity switch comes after this switch, just in case you're running DC into it and you have it on AC mode, but you've got a DC power supply connected to it, you could still switch to polarity even on AC mode. So it's after this switch instead of before. Ugh. The polarity switch doesn't do anything on AC. Because it's AC. The polarity is always switching. Um, 60 times a second. Oh, and I've just got a little, little adapter hooked to it right now. That switches the special plug to bare wires, so I can hook up components to it. Special components. Or hook it up in series with other power supplies. And yeah, it's still got its on-off switch right here. That was on. <laughs> yeah, it's still got the on-off switch. And it's repeated on and off quickly button. And yeah, so I've really upgraded this. I built a new power supply. Cooling fan. All of my cooling fans are stopping working. I don't know why. They're one of my favorite components out there. And they're all breaking. That CPU one with the two speeds, that stopped working. I don't know what happened to that. I just I just plugged it in and it didn't work. It just stopped working for no reason. Just would not go. And these two power supply ones... The other one of these has one of the blades missing, so it still works, it's just vibrate -y. And... One that I got out of the PS3 that I took apart, that stopped working. A similar fate happened to it, that happened to the CPU one, it just stopped working for no reason. I liked that one, 
It blew a lot of air, and it had a casing around it. It was like this one up here. And that fan up there. That's a scroll cage fan. That's for our stove, which is right here. That blows air into the other room. It works really well. Let's power this cooling fan with this new power supply. It's really hard to set this phone up. I don't have a case that stands it up, unlike my tablet. Get out of the wires of that, for frick's sake. The um power cord wire for the power supply keeps getting caught around the wires of this. Anyway, yeah. So, I need a screwdriver for them screws. Alright, now I've got a screwdriver. Those screws are already pretty much unscrewed. Now the negative wire is screwed in. Positive wire hooked up. And now, plug her in. There we go. DC mode, AC mode. Is that this? Weird. These little knobs aren't meant for these um, switches, but they do work to a point. Why aren't you working? Oh, polarity? Ah. No, it's vibrating and going real slow. Yeah, when I switch that to DC mode on this, it really slows it down. This rectifier in this is so much better. I just switched it down voltage. Now it's only running on 6 volts. It goes much, much slower. Ah. I love the sound those ones make. They make a really, really nice hum. AC. Click. 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 There we go. Half wave rectified. Full wave rectified. There we go. <laughs> Why is it going so slow? Ah, oh, there we go.
F wave rectified. Full wave. And speeds up. Now let's see how slow we can get it. Six volts. Half wave. Will it even run? Oh yeah, it's going still. Very slowly. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, there's the new power supply, and there's the upgrades on this bad boy. Oh, I didn't finish talking about the cooling fans. I also took apart a PS2 as well, and that had a cooling fan, much like the PS3 one, just right tiny. And it says on it, read it for 8.5 volts, and I'm like, okay, here's an 8 volt power supply. Plug Snap. It breaks. It blows up. It stops working. It's what the frack? Why do these pieces of crap keep breaking on me? They're one of my favorite components. I should have six, but I've only got two, and only one of them works completely. I also got a power a um power supply fan, much like this these ones, out of a different computer power supply. And that fan broke as well. Had the same fate as all the others. Stopped working for no reason. I thought LEDs were... Were the, the component that fails if you do something slightly wrong with it. But now I know. The vulnerable component to failures are cooling fans. They, they die if you give them anything slightly different than what they're rated for. Give them, like... One milliamp too much, or one volt too much, they blow up. That's over-exaggerating, but yeah. Off. And yeah, there's those. Goodbye.